Okay, so Happy New Year, everybody. Um, welcome to 2021. I keep losing track of the year, but yeah, it's 2021. And uh, being a strange year in 2020, um, we're doing our, the end of the year review a little differently this time. Yeah, because usually I am on that couch right behind you yeah. and we're doing a review at your house instead of on the island and mainland. Yep. So she's in, Kitty's only in Nanaimo right now. I'm in Chilliwack. And we, we, we decided to do this virtually on Zoom. And this is actually my very first time using Zoom meeting, which is pretty, pretty exciting. So thanks. Uh, thanks for everyone for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's it's, so no, no, it's just cool. Yeah. Like I, who would have thought that so we have to do this so i know well it, it, i think it's pretty cool i mean 10 years ago we don't have anything like this right this is isn't skype really similar mm, but not not in this way i mean this you can have multiple people joining so we've been we've been preparing for this video for the last two hours and just trying to work out a little, little glitches and before we started filming and i was telling dan that well maybe one day we should have a giant zoom meeting just send out the code inviting everyone in and uh see how that would go he thinks it would be a total nightmare but i i think that we actually should do this right at the end i <laughs> think that at the end it'd be kind of cool like you just make it short sweet and you put out the link on both of our facebook pages okay and just see what happens okay we can, we can just do it at the end okay we can do that maybe when we do the moby natural Oh my gosh. <laughs> Something like that. So that yeah, cool. we could. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyways, so a few days ago, um, right after Christmas, we put out a video um, asking everyone to tell us a fishing story because we got a whole bunch of prizes that we want to give away as an appreciation of your support throughout the whole year. And uh, I think both you and I have, were pretty surprised, pretty blown away by the amount of responses and the quality of the responses um, that we got. Yeah, the, the comments both on my page and Rod's page were overwhelming. And I mean, in the most positive way, I didn't think that we'd get that many to start. And um, the, 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 yeah, the, the overall quality of the responses were so touching. I mean, like, I felt like I was actually they're experiencing that fishing moment and for me rod they went beyond just you know we caught this many fish or this big fish or this first fish a lot of the comments had to do with family and um it just shows you that fishing it what makes fishing so enjoyable is the people that you do it with so yeah, yeah that's very the, sweet the the people aspect definitely is very important you know the more we the more you and i do this the more it becomes pretty, I guess, pretty apparent, right? You know, there's one guy talking about taking a whole bunch of doctors fishing um, to give them relief from dealing with COVID. And um, another guy was talking about taking, I guess, his dad, um, who was recovering from pancreatic cancer to the vetter catching, and he caught his one, the first hatchery coho, and that was really, that was a, a big thrill, right, I guess. And um, lots of moms taking the uh, kids fishing as well. So um, lots of great stories and thanks everyone for uh, sharing, sharing them with us. I, I, feel, I feel pretty, um, when I was, I, I read them all by the way, uh, even though I haven't had a chance to reply to all of them, just physically, it just wasn't possible. I think I tried every time I reply 10, 20 comments, um, I kind of just, I was so tired from it. I had to stop and then we'll come back to it. Um, but I feel that um, by, from you, you know, everyone sharing the stories, um, I, I think I feel pretty privileged to, to be reading those. Last I counted the number of comments we had, the number of entries we had for the prize draws um, was just, uh, just under 900 entries. Jeez. And uh, which is, you know, like, I think we've done draw prizes in the past and we've had maybe 100, 200 entries, but to have 900 entries, I, I don't know because it's the end of the year, because our followings are bigger now or because of the quality of the prizes. 
Um, but yeah, thank you very much for sending the stories, and I, I really, really enjoyed reading them. Yeah, it was it was a great Christmas gift. It was. I felt like I was sharing Christmas with nine hundred people. Nine hundred people. Yeah. Okay. So without going on for too long, I think we should. We, we got quite a. Well, originally, we were giving away with MobiNet, right? But now, but but now we're gonna. But as the day went on, I saw how many people joined in. I decided that we we needed to give away more prizes. So the very first prize we should give away is. Oh gosh, <laughs> that was not expected. I was like, "This is weird." <laughs> I'm looking for the links. <laughs> Broad stripping. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wow, I'm red. <laughs> okay, this beautiful tourism chill like T-shirt. I, I think they're very nice. What do you think? You, you're very pink. <laughs> I've never yeah, seen you gone so red before. It was re really hot. So anyway, so the the t-shirts we're giving away, there's two of them. So um, I've had a pretty good working relationship with Tours in Chilliwack for many years now. Um, this year, we decided to do something a little more than just fishing. Um, so Kitty has picked up a new hobby in the last couple of years besides fishing. You want to tell us more about it? I sure will. Uh, so over the last couple of years now, this was my second summer, um, I really developed an interest in hiking around the Fraser Valley. And that kind of sprouted from, like I said, last year, because I was over on the island. And when I was out here teaching during the school year, I had a little fitness studio that I went to. And I, I put a lot of time and, and money to go to it throughout the school year. So I thought, well, frick, when I get to, to Chilliwack, I don't wanna just let that all go because I feel like I've, you know, I've gotten stronger over the past, I think it was like five, six months. And so I can't even remember who invited me out, whether it was Daniel or one of our friends, but they're like, let's go hiking. And they were like, you know, we'll go up to Flora Peak and we'll try it out and I can get raw to dub some pictures and hear Flora. And that was the first hike. And for the first time in hiking, because I had worked so hard throughout the year, um, it didn't kill me <laughs> as whereas in previous years, hiking would just be miserable because I was so out of shape. And so that hike led from one to another to another. And then it was just really neat because my, my husband, Daniel, and my best friend, Daniel, um, they're both in a hiking. They would just speak so highly about these mountains and how hard they were and, and like how challenging they could be. And I just took that challenge and I accepted it. And we just started doing more and more. And then, um, you know, this summer when I came back over again after another school year, I just set goals for myself. And it's kind of like what I did for fishing, where I just tried to get 10 peaks in every summer. My first summer, obviously, it was uh, all new ones. And then this summer, I think I managed to get, I think, 11 or 12, and half of them were new. Okay, so we're not talking about little tiny short hikes that are an hour long, maybe two hours, but she's doing hikes that are six hours long, maybe even longer a lot of times. And these peaks are huge, right? Um, so doing, you know, eight to 12 of them a year, um, it's a, in my opinion, it's a big accomplishment. Um, so what are, what would you say are three things that you really enjoy doing from doing this? So three things, three joys I get from hiking. Yeah. Uh, my, the first one that comes to my mind is the hiking together. I mean, um, you know, the people I usually go with are my husband and Daniel, my hiking buddy, and it's what makes it so exciting. It's, it's the whole, the whole journey. It's kind of hard for me to pick three individual things because it's the whole thing that makes it so great. So like, you know, the night before we'll research online, different types of hikes, we'll um, we'll pick one and then we'll wake up the next morning. We'll, we'll meet at our place and, 
we'll, we'll drive up there and there's that like anticipation and excitement that's building inside on the gravel road up to the, the spot where you start the trailhead. And then it's just constant uh, teamwork, bantering. We razz each other. We'll have snacks together. Like, you know, some people kind of are, will will fall down or they're, they're struggling and we pick each other up and we just keep pushing each other through thick and thin. And, you know, I, I enjoy those moments where I'm like sore in the throat because like, I'm just so, my heart's pounding so hard and my, like I can feel my pulse racing and, and the boys are just carrying me through it. And, um, and there's just so much hard work until you get to that peak. And once you get there, there's so much to celebrate and we'll pull out our, our, our candies or our, our snacks and we'll just sit up there and just like the hiker high that you get from it. It's unbelievable. And I've never seen such diverse and breathtaking views on the Island as I do in the Fraser Valley. So for me, it's just the whole experience with your friends that you can't, I, I can't even describe it. Yeah, that, that's. I mean, that sounds up pretty pretty nicely. It's it's a little bit pretty similar to um, mountain biking. Um, yeah. When I used to do it, right? Because the the whole group aspect and just you know, you it's, it's not really a competition, but no, no, uh, no, it's not. Yeah, you're cheering each other on, and in the end, the accomplishment is uh, it's not individual, but it's a group, I guess. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. And. and- uh, and the peak, sorry, sorry. I never, sorry. So I never, I never, I haven't done these hikes yet, but I've been editing these videos that Tourism Chilwak has gotten us to do that on about the hikes that she's doing. And um, those peaks are, like you said, the views are amazing. Um, and I didn't know, I think this area had really has world-class hiking. Um, I, I think so. And, and you're just bringing up more points. Cause like, it's so easy for me to talk about this when I'm in the moment and I'm doing it. And then after it's been months, I'm kind of like, well, like I have short-term memory loss or long-term, maybe I have both. <laughs> I just forget everything, but like, that's what you were saying. It's not a competition. It's like a team. When I'm hiking, I do have no time to think about anything else. I'm thinking about every single footstep, every single, you know, hold, making sure that, you know, nothing, no rocks are slipping down, that I'm, I'm being careful, mindful of my surroundings. And so I feel so much happier after a hike. When we're coming down, we're, you know, we're talking about our highlights, the, the low moments and, you know, what we're going to do when we get back. And there's nothing better than like, you know, coming back to the house, eating whatever you want, you know, having a quick shower, going in the hot tub, watching a movie and just hanging out together. I feel like I've made the best use of my day when I hike. Oh I mean, yeah. I mean, it's a big workout. I, I know that feeling when, when, when you done a long, pretty hard workout like that, it, you, you, usually phys- physically you feel pretty good anyway, and, and mentally too. It, it's good. For I, I do. I feel, I feel amazing. And I used to be that person that was like, well, what's the point? Like, why would I kill myself to get to the top of my mountain and then kill, you know, go all the way back down and still be in pain. Yeah. And I just like, I'm addicted to it. All of you should go check out the three hiking videos that we did last year. And I promise you that there'll be more to come um, in 2021. Um, I mean, you have a couple more that we got to put up that's already being filmed and hopefully next summer uh, she'll be filming some more hikes as well. So looking, you can look forward to that. Uh, and, I can't okay, wait. So we need to give away these uh, t-shirts. We got two of them and we're going to draw one name from my video and one name from yours. Okay. The first winner, it's going to be from my video and it's Colin H. Congratulations, Colin. Yeah, and you can actually read the comments right here. You can read it while I write this down, actually. Okay. A good friend of mine took me to Merritt this year for some trophy bows on fly rods. It was a long day of trolling all sorts of funky things, but nothing would take. Decided to throw on a rooster tail of all things for a heavy, uh, for a Hail Mary, and we landed a decent sized rainbow on our final pass. Safe to say, I now need a fly rod too. Too much fun. Well, at least you got a T-shirt that you can wear when you're fly fishing. <laughs> That's right. 
Yeah. Okay. And next, we're going to draw one from your video as well. Oh, that's a long one. <laughs> okay. This is from Tosh Sutherland. A new net would be amazing. My highlight this year was cronmit fishing at a lake near Merritt with my dad. Actually, I believe you and Rod were fishing the same lake this year. I got my dad into fly fishing after many seasons spin casting and drifting for salmon on the lower mainland. He researched like crazy how to tie chronomids and we ended up having an absolute blast on the lakes and we even camped out for a couple of nights. I think my highlight was watching the other guys stripping flies quickly while we were sitting watching our indicators. I got a little antsy and thought I would try that as well. I didn't have many flies other than chronomids, but I ended up using a sparse, small, olive green California needle that I was using for coho in the fall before. I took a cast and did my slow strips back and nothing. Then as a joke, I made a far cast near the weeds and stripped super fast back and a blackwater trout just slammed it. I couldn't believe it. I thought it was a coincidence, but four or five fish later, my dad quickly changed over from the indicator fishing and we ended up having a great time stripping small leachy things for those aggressive blackwater rainbows. Happy New Year, Kitty. Yay. Okay. Yay. So the next prize we're giving away are the um, Scotty R5 rod holders. So these are brand new rod holders that are just being released into the market. Um, so, you know, Scotty make a, a uh, many different rod holders. You have holders for spinning rods, holders for fly rods. And um, so this new one, it's a universe, universal one. Um, it can be used for fly rods, bait casting rods, and spinning rods. So instead of having two different rod holders, one for the fly rod and one for spinning rods, you can just buy one. And that seems very handy. Yep. So I'm going to even, it's so new, I don't even have them yet. So I'm getting a few for the next late season. Hopefully we'll be using those and uh, hopefully my rod won't be flying into the water again um, with these new rod holders. Um, yeah, so we should, so there's, there's two rod holders and uh, I'm going to give them away together as one. That's a pretty sweet, sweet uh, prize. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And, and the hat, Scotty hat as well. Fingers crossed, short comment. Oh, oh. <laughs> I know this guy. Okay. So Lazy Fischl, uh, Fisch, Fischl is Australian. Okay. So he, um, Richard, I believe that's his name. <laughs> it might be wrong. My apology, but he was, he, he actually came over to Vancouver last December. So a year ago, um, because his daughter was spending moving up here for a few years for her studies. So he came along with her and he actually messaged me um, when once he got, well, right before he came, he messaged me asking where he could go fishing. And well, December is a little tough to go fishing anyway, if you've never been around here. So Len actually took him out sturgeon fishing and he caught a really nice one. Yeah, congratulations. We'll be sending, I think we can send these raw holders to Australia. I think Scotty can do it, right? Because they, they <laughs> you, can, you can actually get Scotty raw holders in Australia. Do it not? Yeah, it's, it's international. So I'm sure they can, they can somehow get them to him. Otherwise, I'll, I'll send them to him. Yeah, congratulations. Great giveaway, buddy. I think he actually owns a little lure, fishing lure company that they make saltwater lures. And I, I've, I've seen them before. And actually, Lazy Fischl, it's the, um, the, the company's name. And I've seen those lures before and they will work really well for um, jigging for Chinook salmon, I think. So now I have four Scotty camera, well, GoPro camera mounts that, that you and I use quite often on my boat um, to give away. So we have four of them and we'll give We'll draw two names from my channel and two names from your channel. Sweet. Yeah. Let's do okay. this. Okay, that's a hard one to pronounce. <laughs> nice looking, or nice, looking forward to 2021. Yeah. Okay, let's draw another one. Oh, okay. There you go. You want to read that? I'll, I'll write. Here's a comment from John Paul. Number one. 
Thank you, Rod and Kitty, for your awesome IG and YouTube work and support of local fisheries. Number two, fishing story. We were four guys that chartered a guided trip up the Squamish and Chequemus River. One had never held a rod. One had never fished in Canadian waters. One wasn't sure what to do. And one regular, all, although very unlucky, Squamish and better fisherman, a.k.a. moi. Uh, the guide was out from Pemberton, and regardless the hooks and snags and broken lines, it is the adventure that always stays engraved in our memories. Coaches like you give us the confidence to get it done right. But a guide always helps. Yeah. That's awesome. Yes, yeah, great. Yeah. Another funky Gu Gua Guamis. 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 Before even making a cast, I dropped my float at my feet while fixing my reel. When I looked down, the float was gone and a steelhead was on. I didn't hook any other fish that day. Okay. I that's pretty sweet that they were fixing their reel and they dropped their float at their feet and they hooked a steelhead. Maybe that's what I got to do to catch them. Ooh, that's a hard one to pronounce too. <laughs> uh, Andres Furs? Andre, well, I wonder what Andreas language Andreas Furs. Is that right? Uh, yeah, something like that, yeah. And his comment was, my favorite memory in 2020 is the one that got away. I hooked one around 45 to 50 centimeters marble trout and about three meters away and the fish made a giant leap out of the river. Everything was in slow motion, shook its head and got off. Can't wait for April for the seasons to start again. Um, round two, ding, ding, ding. Um, I'm pretty sure this individual is from Europe. We got a, we got a loop um, dry bag, loop tackle dry bag. This is a 20 liter dry bag. So if you're out fishing in the rain like you are probably doing this whole season because it's raining so much, um, you can put your camera gear in here. Um, comes really handy. Um, we also got a loop cap. <laughs> a little big. Yeah, and um, and the loop um, t-shirt as well. So this one, I think Willie, who's the one um, was generously donating these items from Loop Tackle, say that he can probably exchange this um, if it's a wrong size. This one is extra large, so just a little bigger for us. Too big for us. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we, we, we work with Loop Tackle a little bit um, in the last couple of years. It's probably one of your favorite brands, right? Oh, for fly fishing, definitely. I mean, I use their Q rod and reel and um, it's a, raw, a setup that I would definitely advise for someone who's just starting out. Uh, I feel like you can just take it and it just casts out by itself of course, I have to take the tips that he's given me when I took those fly casting lessons with him, but yeah. it's just a, a very delightful setup to use. Yeah, I was going to say the combination of um, uh, having a really good instructor and um, some really good gear has really made your casting so much better in the last two years. Aww. I would say so. It, I mean, it's not like you, you, weren't, you were terrible before, but you, were, you had the basics but just by having Willie showing you little tricks here and there and having that new setup. I mean, when, when you and I went out for lakes this year, I mean, last year, and I thought, wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. It was a lot of fun. Like I would love to go out and see him again and try practicing again in like a slower piece of water and then something a little bit faster. But um, I left a comment on my Instagram saying that I would try to fly fish, you know, as much like, well, I said I'd fly fish majority of the season. At the end of fall and the beginning of winter, Dan and I always spend a good time um, just targeting trout using trout beads and an indicator setup on a fly rod. And um, after doing that for a few weeks and then slipping over to my center pinning for steelhead, 
I've noticed that my mending actually has gotten a lot better because of me fly fishing. And so I'm noticing how to mend even my, my center pin, which, you know, I did do before, but I'm just a lot more mindful of it now. Mending's hard, in my opinion. Like it's something that you, it takes a long time to learn. Right? Dan, yeah. out of 10, how's my mending? It's pretty good now. Like, almost at six. Almost, almost six? Okay. Dan, what is it? <laughs> I'd give you a seven. Seven's oh, not bad. Seven, out of seven, seven out of seven? Okay. You definitely have room to improve. I guess that's what you call constructive criticism. <laughs> it's better. I just got to understand, like, I'm still trying to understand when I need to mend upstream and when I need to mend downstream without moving my setup. Yeah. Well, fly fishing is another, another like discipline that you, you, you got to spend all the time to, to get, I guess, get better at it. It can be pretty yeah. frustrating if you don't have anyone, I guess, showing you the ropes and right. So t taking the lesson, it's, it's pretty important. So if you, Want to get into fly casting, fly fishing, um, and in the I guess Fraser Valley lower mainland area, um, consider taking a lesson with Willie. Um, we'll put his info on the bottom. Um, he's he, amazing. He's he's really good. Just the way he explains things, um, it, you, it's really understandable, and he doesn't make you feel like you crap <laughs> to begin with, right? No, but, he is so encouraging yeah. and is just like full of energy and he doesn't like get tired. Like I, I bet you he could have sat there all day. Mm -hmm, totally. And it was, it was really fun. Yeah. Okay. So let's draw um, a name from your video. This Sweet. Time. Do, 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 do. Ooh. Are you ooing because of what she looks like? No, like someone, so I'm, lo I'm looking at Utah. Like, oh. <laughs> not around here. Again, another one. Not what she looks like. What are you talking about? <laughs> you can barely see on this, in this picture. I'm just saying, well, we, we've been having quite a few like guy winners. Now we have a female winner. That's, that's great. <laughs> I'm trying to be eco here, Kitty. Okay? <laughs> Please. No, I, I love that we have, you know, more fe females are entering the industry. Eva said that her best memory was going to Duchenne, Utah and learning to fly fish for the first time. It was such a peaceful time and brought in a little, and I brought in a little rainbow. Oh, well, maybe, so maybe she's not from there. I want, she, maybe she's from here and then she just, I don't know, we'll, we'll find out again. Yeah. It's cool seeing where kind of everyone's from, right? Like you have yeah. an Australian winner, maybe someone from Europe, someone who's traveled to Utah. Like, that's cool. Yeah. I just like it when our audience is kind of, it's pretty broad and it's pretty mm -hmm. diversified, right? It's not, it's, it's women, it's men, it's kids, it's older um, individuals and um, someone from, you know, from Europe or Asia or Australia. So it's, it's, it's nice to see, um, you know, it, from the really big place, but we're pretty, it's a pretty tight community, I guess, right? We all share this. I, and I feel that it has a very uh, family feeling. So the next one, um, it's a Shimano Sahara reel, um, Shimano Sahara 4000 reel. So it's a little bigger than the ones that you and I use. We use a 2500 size, um, 4000. I know Dave Murphy, that's kind of like, he, he uses that a lot for, I guess for saltwater fishing, yeah. um, even even for salmon and steelhead in rivers sometimes, I, I guess. Um, but you and I have used that for Chinook salmon in the ocean when we're jigging for squid and yeah. live squid to catch Chinook salmon. So this reel, um, as mentioned earlier, was donated by Dave and Marilyn from Murphy Sport Fishing. And we have enjoyed many, many, many trips with uh, Murphy Sport Fishing in the last five years? Since 2000, well, since 2016 for That's you. That's how I started with you because they were one of the first people that I had ever worked with. Well, and, and you know what? They're, they're, they're kind of the, they're the first fishing lodging outfitters that I have uh, filmed with. Um, yeah, one of the very first few. So I think it was 2015, so five years. 
and we've been to many different places. We've done, um, you know, I guess river fishing, like stand river fishing on a drip boat, on the, on the boat. And we've done Kaika, um open water fishing for salmon, Lincoln halibut, which is one trip that we look forward to every year, right? Oh, totally. That is my favorite, going up to Cayuca. Here we go. Jimmy? Oh, there you go. So longtime subscriber. Um, I just want to say thank you for your content. Your guide helped me catch my first pink at Englishman River. So this Shimano Sahara reel um, is the one that we, you and I both recommend. It's actually recommended in your lake fishing tutorial video this year um, that we recommend if you're just getting to fishing, um, the Shimano Sahara is a great spinning reel to get. It's not very, very pricey, um, yet it's not an entry level reel. It's, um, it's mm -hmm. very durable and you can use it for salmon. You can use the smaller ones, you can use it for trout. Um, they last for a long time, you know, just, you can, I mean, it's not even, a, it's, it's a primarily, it's a freshwater reel. And I know Dave uses it for in the salt as well. Um, which I think is kind of crazy, but he say he just rings it down after each trip and it's totally fine. So he can, yeah, it's really durable. Well, he's the Shimano guy. So we got to believe him. Exactly. Yeah. And well, I'm a Shimano guy too. So for many, many years. Dave, I, Dave is even more Shimano. Yeah, so than Dave has Dave's like Shimano, the ultimate. Yeah. He has been a Shimano pro staff for, I don't know, 30 years since he was, he was a teen. So um, I've only been working with Shimano for the last 10 years. But before that, I, I've always used Shimano. I love Shimano reels. They, they, they're great. So what's going on with the bird? He wanted to say hi. Yeah. You want to introduce the bird instead? <laughs> People don't this know. This is Tippet, everyone. Yeah, it's Tippet. So Tippet. I actually remember when I got him, I put in, it was somewhere on Instagram, and I asked people like what his name should be. And someone from IG actually named him. I don't know if they know yeah. that, but. Yeah, yeah, I remember that, yeah. And Tip is pretty moody. Uh, yeah, he, he is on the island, but when we're out on the mainland, he's super happy. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I just remember some happy. days he likes me and other days he doesn't, so. He's particular, just yeah. like his mommy. Yeah. <laughs> So we got a few more little prizes to give away before we do the big one, which is the Moby Net. And um, I went through my garage <laughs> to look for more prizes. And this is a good one, I think. So this is a um, freshwater fish species ID card for British Columbia. And it's made by my good friend, Professor Eric Taylor um, at UBC. And he's actually the curator for the Biodiversity Museum over there. And uh, it's a wonderful guide, two sites with all the, uh, well, most of the freshwater fish species that you can find in British Columbia. And Those are all the freshwater, just freshwater? Just freshwater fish in British Columbia. And so um, I've caught like five of them? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, yeah. And it's got like, um, for salmon, it's got like the juvenile and the adult you know, adult version of it. So you can yeah. see the differences. Oh, okay. Okay. So there is no, there is salt water stuff in there. Well, s salmon is considered anadromous, right? So, oh, I guess so. Uh, so the that's pretty much the only ones that has some kind of salt water relationship with. Um, all the other ones are like different, there's different white fish, um, grayling, and uh, sticklebacks, sculpins, and um, yeah, lots of different ones. So, and so, okay, so we got, I got four of these freshwater guides, uh, freshwater fish guides that we'll give away. And I'm gonna combine each one with a pack of um, size one on the hooks. What size do you use, Kitty? For what? I don't know, for, for. Mostly size one, um, we can go up to, or down to, Four. And five aught. Five aughts, ten aughts, twelve aughts. Yeah. Fourteen aughts. 
So Astronauts. size one, it's kind of <laughs> size one's the this is my favorite size. That's why I'm picking size one. Um, I like to use that for I guess fishing bait for coho. Um, sometimes I go down to size four. I guess fishing beads is size four. Is that right? Or, beads no. are the fours. Beads are fours. No, not smaller. No, no, no they're okay. fours. Yeah, yeah. So, and I love these hooks. They they're great. They're super sharp. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's. Hmm? No, nothing. Were you saying something? No, I was just. Are they the no escapes? No. So these are the regular ones. So, so these are the cutting point. Um, cutting point ones. <gasps> Hold so, it close to the camera. Okay. So the SSW um, comes in two different types. There's the cutting point and the needle point. So these are the cutting points. I actually prefer the needle point but I know many others like the cutting point. So there's four packages and we'll draw, I guess, two, two winners on each channel. Is anyone coming to wait for us or no? I haven't seen anyone yet. Who she? <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, new, new co-host. <laughs> I don't look that much different. Yeah, I'm trying to look for someone who looks similar to you. Uh. Okay, so this is from my channel. Oh, Monster Fins. Okay. Awesome videos, man. Always enjoy watching you guys fish. Josh B, 2020, what a year. No doubt. No doubt one we will never forget, but I hope everyone can remember it for a pos it for positive reasons. For me, the highlight of 2020 and of my lifetime of fishing so far was watching Dominic, my six-year-old son, swing his first sw swing up his first winter steelhead. Not only did he pick pick my pocket with his spoon, is this Josh? This guy, so this guy's a friend of yours, right? Yeah. Yeah, like it's Dan, we've, we've gone mushroom picking with him. Dan, like he was telling us where he got this fish with his son and we actually went back and tried it out. But by okay. the time we got to the run where his son had got his steelhead out of, yeah. it was too dark. Okay. Actually, I'm lying. It wasn't super dark. It was almost too dark, but I broke off right before I needed to get there. And yeah. I didn't bring my gear down to the river. So Dan's like, let's just give up. <laughs> yeah, nice. Good job, Josh. Did I see my face up there? I'm pretty sure I did. So Bushman J85. So my favorite moment of 2020 was my dad buying his first boat. My wife and I just had our first baby, congratulations. And five weeks later, my sister had a baby as well. Congratulations. <laughs> My dad, who has worked so hard his entire life to provide for us, decided he wanted to get a boat for the family and grandkids so we all can enjoy fishing adventures as our kids slash grandkids grow up. It was a special day when we got the boat too. There were lots of delays in building the boat due to COVID shutdowns, but we got the boat on the last month for coho fishing. On our first trip, it was just my dad and I, and we hooked into eight fish a rarity in washington state oh that's cool never never seen my dad so happy before all he could talk about was how excited he was to have the grandkids out in a few years and how he can teach them how to crab slash shrimp and fish cool that's such a cool story cool. i love that i love yeah. that oh this guy comments a lot in our videos Tim on the fly. So finally got my outdoor channel up and running. It's been, it's been a learning experience and watching your channel progress helped me have the confidence and inspiration to finally just get out there and do it. I just, you know, like Tim, that's awesome that, you know, you found inspiration in watching my channel kind of go up. Um, and it was, you know, I was inspired by others, Rod and, and another individual that just kind of pushed me to do it. And I don't think I would have done it without that push. And I'm really glad that I did. So, and I think, I think what I was going to say was this, that's the great thing about YouTube. Um, it's a great learning platform that you're learning from someone who's more, who's more experienced than you. 
and mm-hmm. um, then you know you start on your own thing. And, you know, th- there is a place for everyone on YouTube. If you choose to p- produce content, um, anyone can do it, right? Um, you know, we have we have lots of followers, but I also follow lots of other YouTubers who mm-hmm. I look up to. So it's it's not just a one way street. And I always feel like it's a one way street. Like I'm always looking up to platforms that are bigger than mine and further along and more successful. And I'm trying, I watch what they do and try to learn from it. So it's neat to, yeah, you're right. That you can always learn from somebody else. No, how, no matter what, um, how old or I guess big your channel is. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, you know, funny you say that because, you know, every now and then you get reminded by, other people who have been, you know, impacted by your teaching on YouTube, right? And then you say, oh, you, you know, you, you actually have a pretty big influence on others um, by doing these videos. Okay, so our last prize, which is the biggest one, um, is going to be the Moby Net um, of your choice. And um, I got quite a few Moby Nets here because we love Moby Nets. And uh, this one right here, it's a small one. And we used this one for grayling up in the Yukon territory uh, a couple of years ago. Um, and you can use this for, I guess, trout in the Skagit. It's a small net just for that size. And you can just tuck this in your vest or just let it hang you know, in the back, right? And then we have the, um, here we go. So here, this is the um, steelhead. And um, it has a pretty big hoop. And actually, this the size of this net, that the hoop is actually the same as the Dan and Kitty special, which is designed by... Dan know? and Kitty. Yeah. Um, except the handle of, on the steel here is quite short, whereas the Dan and Kitty special is, you know, twice as long. So my question is, why did you choose to have this design having a slightly longer handle than the other one? Okay, so we we originally, well, when we first started fishing, we didn't use nets. We just, I, I don't know, we always look, we were kind of a, we were kind of snobby to the idea of nets and thought that it was more like noobish to use them. And it wasn't until we actually won one of the nets in a contest where we actually like realized we couldn't live without them. And so we started with the loon model and the loon model, um, it has a smaller hoop, smaller bag, and a handle that's really similar to the Dan and Kitties. Um, but we found that with some of the fish we were catching, um, especially when we went up North Island, that it could the, the net size couldn't handle the fish. And a lot of them would flop out, which be which would be quite frustrating, or they'd be so curled up that I just they weren't laying properly, like yeah. horizontally. Um and so we actually, Dan asked Don if he could build us a net and it kind of is a combination between the steelhead and the loon. So it does have a longer handle. Um, it's the same length overall as the loon net, um, but the handle's a little bit shorter than the loon, if it makes okay. sense. Yeah, that makes and, sense. And the reason we got it is so that it could fit down the side of Daniel's backpack. Um, and it wasn't too high up. I think the loon was actually um, too high up off his backpack. So it'd get caught in things in the bush. Right. Um, but yeah, the model that we have now, it fits our needs perfectly, fits in a backpack. Um, I also prefer it like to have the handle where you can, you know, reach down to scoop up your fish. I feel like on that net, the steelhead one, it's just too short. Um. We just have one person trying to join just right now. But then the, he Who is it? Then he, his name is Ian. I don't know. <laughs> I feel Do you let Ian in? Um, so these these are bomb proof and they're also very well designed. I really love the design, right? Um, the and, hand- and the varnish too. Like even when the varnish comes off, I don't get slippers ever from it. Yeah. Ian's okay, in well- here? <laughs> okay so we we send out um i guess an invitation for people to join our draw for the moby net and uh now we have one person joining 
I don't. I think he can hear us, but he doesn't have his webcam on. But anyways, we just. We just and turn your mic on. <laughs> or maybe he's too shy. He's connected to the audio now. Hi, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna pick one name from your video and one from mine. And we're gonna do rock paper scissors um, to pick the ultimate winner for the Moby Net. Can you still see me right now, though? I can see you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's, <laughs> let's pick a name from your video right now. Okay. <laughs> Ian, don't spoil it. Ooh, Camille. She watches all our, um, our premiers in the videos and she lives in the caribou i believe and she she fishes a lot oh i i totally remember her yes 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 yeah. and she always makes these funny comments and uh yeah she's awesome um you want to read that comment anyways sure so 2020 has been an interesting fishing season for me and a season of loss i lost my fishing net out of my canoe no idea what happened to it but uh, netted one nice rainbow and the next rainbow I hooked I realized there was no net to be seen threw a rod and reel overboard by accident obviously about two weeks later ordered a new rod and picked up picked it up at the post office and immediately set it up and went to the river hooked bottom and the rod snapped oh my gosh this this is bad news our bad things come in threes right yeah um, the, uh, then last Thursday, ice fishing, my brand new, beautiful cell phone fell in my pocket and went straight down the hole. Could be worse. At least I'm out enjoying the fresh air and filling, filling the smoker with fresh fish. Well, that's a good well, idea. Hopefully that was, you know, bad three, you had three bad things. You lost the net. You snapped a rod, your cell phone. My fingers crossed for you that you went a net today. Okay, let's pick let's pick my my uh, name right here. Luca Redford, Luca, right? Yeah. Um. So fishing story. Oh, fifteen years old. So me, fifteen. My Nono, eighty, went <laughs> um on his thirty-five year old boat into Campbell River. We started off catching nothing but weeds for half the day. We decided to call it the day and reeling our lines. One rod was already reeled in. As I was reeling in the second rod, a monster tie grabbed the hoochie and started running. It was spoiling my line so fast, and my Nono was the most excited I've ever seen him. I slowly reeled it up to the boat as he netted the ginormous beast. I put gloves on and he took a photo. So later I released the salmon back into the water to make some babies. After Good. this event for summer of fishing, I am eager to start river fishing. The equipment is very expensive and this would help me out. Aww. I, I think they both very worthy winners. So, I do too. So I'm going to feel bad whoever which whoever you uh, loses, right? Yeah. Um, okay. So do we just go one, two, three, like that? Okay. Okay, turn towards one? me. Oh, like that. Okay. Okay. But I, ha I have to watch it, is you know, it, the it, camera, because I got to make sure that you're not cheating. Is it first person to three? Yeah. Okay. To make it more exciting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 One sec, we, one have, sec. we have a we have a witness. We have Ian <laughs> as the witness, right? So it's not I want to know who this Ian is. This Has is he not... left anything else in the chat? No, he's only say hi. No. Yeah. <laughs> so. okay. okay. Oh my gosh! I actually feel like I have a chance at winning this. I have to win. I gotta, if I, I don't win, win, I'll feel so sad. <laughs> okay. I'm actually like my pulse is racing. <laughs> okay. 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 So one, two, three. You, you count. Okay. So what, how you play, how my students have taught me, you go rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's how you play. You just can't go like this. You got to go rock, paper, scissors, shoot. And okay. when I say shoot, you have to put out your, whatever you're doing. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. 
Do it. Okay, ready? Yeah. Ready? Yeah, <laughs> Are go you? Ahead, go. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ooh. One. Okay, ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. I feel like it's legs. Like I'm done before you are. No, it's no, it's the same. Okay. <laughs> One ready? each. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Shoot. <laughs> Wait, does that mean you win? No. Or is it to no, three? It's, it's up to three. So okay. two, one. Ready? Yep. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ooh. Okay. Ready? Last one. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, no. Camille wins. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that, that's good. Oh, uh, no, both are so worthy of and, winning. And, <laughs> and you know what? You know what? I think I think I will send something to Luca anyways. I'll, I'll find something for him. Oh, you should. Yeah, I will. Yeah. I, yeah that, that's great. I, I love that ending. Um, Ian has left. And this is a good time to say <laughs> goodbye because this has gone on for long enough. It's 10.50 at night. She's tired. I need work to do my work. I need to go clean the kitchen. Um, so we're going to, I guess we're going to end the video right there. Um, I just like to say thank you everyone again for watching our videos last year. Thank you for the support. And uh, without that encouragement, I think we probably would have stopped long ago, right? <laughs> yeah, or just never started. Never started, I guess. Yeah. Ian's back in. So I think we look forward to produce more videos throughout 2021. Um, isn't that right, Kitty? I hope so. If we ever get these travel restrictions lifted so I can come out to the mainland and hang out because oh. you're going to go fishing without me. Yeah. Or oh, I could come over to the island, right? So, yeah. 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 No, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. Just remember, if you guys ever do an episode of uh, fishing with people that suck, I volunteer. I think yeah. you may <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> we, we have to consider that then. <laughs> yeah. A training video, how to fish. Yes. How to not suck. <laughs> how to not suck. How to not suck. <laughs> okay, on that note, it's late. Until next time. Good luck fishing. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs>